Epilogue. This first edition of this short book remains a work in progress. It is an invitation to engage in a new and hopefully productive dialogue on how to address the challenges of understanding the intricate relationship between value and capital. We believe our proposed approach has also the potential to impact post-capitalist transformative theory and revolutionary praxis. We posit that value must be re-examined and liberated from its subservient ties to capital. However, this must not come at the expense of disregarding how capital appropriates value. Under capitalism, value loses its inherent normativity, and Marxist critics have not provided a positive normative framework for capital as value in motion. This conceptual ambiguity has led to confusion and division among critical theorists. On one hand, some argue that the notion of value should encompass all inputs involved in capitalist value production while conflating intrinsic value and commodity value. On the other hand, others warn about this conflation, viewing it as an erroneous attempt to treat capital as a transhistorical phenomenon. Capital appropriates intrinsic value and transforms it into its own version of value, the commodity or capitalist value, while fetishizing it. The antipode should be to defetishize value by rejecting the commonly accepted idea of its objectivity. Marx's distinctions between abstract and concrete labor, use value and exchange value, enabled him to expose certain erroneous assumptions of bourgeois political economy. However, it would be inconsistent for critical theory to overlook the differentiation between true value and fetish value as two interconnected ideal typical constructs. We view, true, value, as the antithesis of capital, demonstrating how capital drains our world of, true, value. This is the pivotal step in the process of defetishizing fetish value, which has become omnipresent, the definitive source of worldwide devastation, subjugation, and injustice, yet entrenched to reveal its fundamental anti-normative nature. Merely redefining the concept of value is insufficient however without establishing the foundations for new value regimes relevant to the creation of genuine value. For care, love, justice, autonomy, social and ecological well-being, conviviality, and cooperation to flourish as sustainable sources of authentic, true, value, they must be integrated into a communist way of life, a paradigmatically distinct value regime from that of capitalist value extraction. Typically, most individuals engage in activities that enhance their lives and those of others, creating true value. However, some actively participate in a spectrum of social struggles to resist capitalism and reclaim what has been lost to its power. Whether through direct confrontation or civil disobedience, these efforts generate true value as they draw upon commoning praxis in surviving commons. Some struggles may even succeed in preserving and reclaiming parts of the commons from the encroachment of capital. Others endeavor to create commons-like ecosystems and expand them, establishing worker-owned cooperatives, social solidarity economies, community wealth-building initiatives, regenerative systems of food production, time banks, community gardens, peer-to-peer -peer production, and sharing economies. These struggles have enabled us to create conditions of possibility for generating true value. However, we must acknowledge the reality that we are all passengers on a train propelled by capital, hurtling toward a cliff at an increasingly rapid pace. While some of the value produced may alleviate hardships of life and even slow the unfolding catastrophes in certain places, it is imperative to recognize that these efforts are occurring within the confines of the train and, so far, have had little impact on its trajectory. Exiting the train is a costly endeavor and not a viable option for many. The train is peculiar in that it drags its external environment towards the precipice along with it. While it may be necessary to uncouple a few carriages or negotiate with those in the first-class section or with the train drivers, the states, to secure a more equitable distribution of welfare or social protection or to engage in political action to delay the onset of disasters, such measures are at best short-term and only partial solutions. They may even divert attention away from addressing the root causes of the crisis and finding necessary radical and sustainable solutions. Political revolutions aiming to take control of the train are becoming increasingly necessary. However, the history of the past century demonstrates that even the most remarkable revolutions cannot guarantee salvation. We must avoid seeing any solution as exclusively immune to corruption. Even well-crafted strategies, if they do not prioritize a paradigm shift, risk falling into the hands of those who hold power and prioritize the extraction value. What fuels the train of civilization is value. 
value is what societies hold dear and strive towards realizing in any objective form possible. Drawing on thermodynamic terminology, metaphorically speaking, true value is akin to free energy that can be captured and transformed to promote the self-regeneration and expansion of life, while fetish value is like waste heat that dissipates without being of genuine use and entails significant harm. Life is in a constant battle against entropy. Life harnesses the free energy distributed due to entropy and transforms it into forms necessary for its own regeneration and expansion. This is achieved through the labor of living organisms, which possess the creative power to do so. This is how life functions creatively. True value is the product of this perennial struggle, which manifests in social and ecological graces such as good health, a thriving society, and a fulfilling life. Individual organisms borrow true value from the larger system to flourish and self-actualize. They, in turn, produce true value to inject back into the system and allow others to thrive. This is the miraculous circle of life. Life resists the effects of entropy by organizing itself in diverse commons-based forms of social and ecological cooperation. From the earliest forms of life to complex organisms and entire ecosystems, commoning has been and remains a key strategy for overcoming the challenges of thermodynamic decay. Just as life harnesses the power of entropy to create, regenerate, and sustain itself, capital embodies the inverse force, constantly expropriating and eroding the foundations of life in its endless and aggressive quest for profit and growth. As we conclude this epilogue to the open-ended dialogue we started in this book, let us embrace the urgency of the radical paradigm shift required to challenge the destructive forces of capital. Let us reclaim value from its grasp and forge a future that transcends the contradictions of capitalism by redefining the very essence of value, with the aim of creating new societies that nurture the flourishing and liberation of all. References <laughs>